Today, we'll hear about key data coming out of the American Association of Cancer Research 2015 annual meeting. All that and more starts right now on OncLive News Network. Hello and welcome, I'm Laura Jones. Now there is data from the Keynote 006 trial, the first head-to-head -head trial between these two agents in the melanoma setting. Dr. Eric Whitman, a surgical oncologist and director of the Atlantic Melanoma Center in New Jersey, describes the study and clinical relevance of the results. The trial design of the Keynote 006 trial was pretty straightforward. Patients were randomized to receive two different doses of pembrolizumab versus ipilimumab. The ipilimumab was only given for four treatments every three weeks, but the pembrolizumab was continued uh, until progression or lack of tolerance. And the main take-home message from that is that we really have robust data now proving that pembrolizumab uh, is better than ipilimumab in frontline treatment for metastatic melanoma. And that's important because before it was only approved in second line in the United States and it's not approved at all in Europe yet, so it's going to help hopefully European approval. But it's just, it's something that we all expected and it's good to see the data actually confirm what we thought was going to be the results. Right now, pembrolizumab is approved second line, so you have to have failed either ipilimumab or Yervoy and or a BRAF inhibitor if you're BRAF mutated. So right now, you can't, by label, give pembrolizumab until you've failed other drugs. With these trial results and hopefully subsequent FDA approval, the label should change, and it should be possible to give pembrolizumab frontline setting. The interesting thing is, this drug is so relatively non-toxic, it's going to achieve very rapid acceptance outside of university centers. It's going to be very important to patients because they're going to be able to get this drug safe to, safely and it's going to be efficacious or more efficacious than existing standard in their community center close to home without having to travel distances and go to university centers. Both agents continue to be investigated in various tumor types and lines of treatment. Pembrolizumab is also demonstrating promising results in the non-small cell lung cancer setting. In the Phase 1 Keynote 001 trial, pembrolizumab had an overall response rate of 45.2% among patients with high PDL1 expressing non-small cell lung cancer. In the entire study population, the overall response rate was 19.4% and median overall and progression-free survival were 12 and 3.7 months respectively. The medium duration response was 12.4 months. Pembrolizumab already received an FDA breakthrough therapy designation in October 2014 in the non-small cell lung cancer setting. Possible approval would make this the second immunotherapy approved in this setting after nivolumab. Another meeting presentation highlighted the findings of a study looking at the addition of nivolumab to frontline ipilimumab versus ipilimumab alone for treatment of melanoma. Again, Dr. Eric Whitman describes the findings from the Checkmate 069 trial. Checkmate 069 was also presented at AACR this week in another exciting trial. I mean, we had phase one data about a year ago combination therapy with ipilimumab, which is approved, and nivolumab, which is approved, but they're not approved in combination. And although the toxicity is a little higher, the results are really spectacular. And I think that's the, the key word for that, spectacular. You have 61% um, of people had measurable tumor shrinkage as per the standard RESYST 1.1 criteria. But if you look at the data even further, there's only about 14% of patients who didn't respond who actually had disease grow, and that's unbelievable. Finally, there's more data that may support the expanded use of the PARP inhibitor Olaparib, which is already approved for ovarian cancer. In metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer, data were presented from the first stage of the Phase II multi-step adaptive 2-PARP trial. In a biomarker-defined subgroup of men with pretreated disease, Olaparib produced a durable overall response rate of 87.5%. The overall response rate in the entire population was 32.7%. The study found that patients with certain types of mutations, including BRCA2 and ATM, were more likely to respond to the agent. According to Dr. Joaquin Mateo from the United Kingdom, these are potentially the first clinical data supporting molecular stratification of treatment in prostate cancer. 
and we are testing this idea in the second stage of the two-part trial. Stage two of the study will enroll patients who screen positive for the mutations linked to the response in stage one. Another presentation reported positive results from a phase one dose escalation trial combining Olaparib with the P13K inhibitor BKM120. This combination proved to be safe and clinically beneficial for women with triple negative breast cancer and for patients with high-grade serious ovarian cancer. In patients with ovarian cancer, the overall response rate was 26%, with 48% of patients having stable disease. In patients with triple negative breast cancer, the overall response rate was 21%, with a 50% stable disease rate. The combination was well tolerated with primarily grades 1 and 2 adverse events. The most common non-hematologic toxicities of all grades were nausea, fatigue, and hyperglycemia. Anemia and neutropenia were the most common hematologic toxicities of all grades. To see more interviews from the American Association of Cancer Research meeting, please visit the website on your screen. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching Onclive News Network. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.